Conventional wisdom says that multiple simultaneous attempts to log into a web application that fail should result in a message somewhat like this. Often the guidance is to simply lock the account out. You've tried to log in too many times, make the account unavailable. But think about this in the context of a denial of service attack. If I know someone's username, all I've got to do is send five incorrect passwords, just make them up, and submit those to that login page, and the user's locked out. They can now no longer log back in. I have denied them service. And as I just mentioned with exploiting the password reset, you could always automate this too. So as an attacker, you could keep sending invalid credentials to the login resource. And then even if the account gets unlocked, they just get locked out again. So whilst you don't want to have completely unbridled access to keep trying to brute force an account, you've also got to be conscious of the fact that it can be used to deny that user service. Now, of course, this then begs the question, how should you handle multiple failed attempts to log in? Let's have a look at some ways. To be clear, the risk that we're talking about here is brute force. So an attacker is trying all sorts of different passwords against the one account to try and see if they can guess the right one. Now, sometimes that may be manual. The attacker may be using a very rudimentary attack where they're just trying to guess what the person's password is. Or it could be highly automated. So the attacker could write a script which goes through a common set of passwords and attempts to find the one that matches the account. In both cases, though, there are less invasive ways of defending against the risk. So one is to slow the rate of login attempts. So as there are consecutive failed attempts, the rate at which the attacker can attempt new passwords on decreases. That doesn't lock the legitimate user out for any long period of time, but it does enormously decrease the effectiveness of the attacker. Another option is to allow them to unlock the account via email. And for all intents and purposes, this becomes logging in via email. So that is an email is sent to the account owner and they're then invited to click a link, provide their credentials and log in. That verifies that only the legitimate owner of that email address can use the link to log in. And it also keeps an external attacker away from continually trying username and password pairs. You still have the risk that the legitimate owner could go to the website and not be able to log in, but at least now there's a side channel, that is sending an email, which helps them get around that problem. There are also ways of verifying identity via other independent channels. So for example, SMS or phone. Hey, you've tried to log in too many times and failed. We've just sent you an SMS with a one-time password that you can use to log back in. Of course, that then requires other processes in place, not least of which is that you've got to know the person's number and you really need to verify it as well. Certainly, if you're going to implement any sort of lockout, you are going to need a mechanism for unlocking. One thing you do want to be a bit cautious of is trying to lock out via other attributes. So for example, trying to lock out via IP address. A good example of where that doesn't work is in 2014, GitHub got hit with an enormous denial of service attack. And what they found was 40,000 unique IP addresses attempting to log on, not to the one account, but to a whole variety of different accounts. And at a slow rate, so they weren't just sitting there hammering the one account, they were rotating through them all. So in that case, just trying to lock out an IP address wouldn't really work because the nature of the distributed attack via the botnet meant there were all these unique IP addresses. That's a pretty high-end example. And certainly there's a case to be made by using other attributes of the request to either throttle the speed of logins or block it entirely for a period of time. But hopefully it demonstrates how this is actually not an easy problem to solve. It's another nuanced problem. There are lots of different edge cases and you need to find the right balance for the particular system that you're working with. So that's account lockouts. And that's the last I want to cover on those individually targeted denial of service attacks. 
Now let's go and look at larger scale attacks. Let's look at distributed denial of service attacks.